Hi, everybody. Welcome to the August 15th, 2024 protocol update. I'm John Toit. I'm with the OCMCA, and I'm the director of EMS operations. And I'm Bonnie Kincaid, the executive director. Welcome. Starting with 9.5, the IV ancillary supply exchange list is just adding so the hospitals will give you bags of lactated ringers, which are in protocols now, as well as reminding the hospitals not to give you pump tubing. Those are the only two changes here, so super easy. The medication substitution protocol has also been updated. It doesn't really interfere with your operations, your work. It's more of a pharmacy issue. So the next protocol is the documentation and patient care record protocol. Now this protocol was just combined. 7.15 and 7.151 were combined. The changes are just moving 7.15.1 into 7.15, making it one protocol so it's less confusing. The major two takeaways of this protocol update is that if you transport a patient to a hospital, you have two hours to get the EPCR up to the hospital, and that's only if you leave a field note or run form. If you don't leave a field note or run form, that PCR must be uploaded to the hospital before you leave. The second take-home is that if you don't transport a patient, a refusal, etc., then you have 24 hours to get that PCR locked and up to the state. And that's really it for that protocol. Not a whole lot else. Again, the same as it was before, just combined. The next protocol is the respiratory distress protocol. Protocol 7.24, N-tidal carbon dioxide monitoring protocol, referred back to a lot of respiratory situations to where you'd use monitoring. So it only made sense to add a reference to that protocol in the respiratory distress protocol. So that's all we change here. The last one is the communications with emergency facilities, 8.12. And the only change here is that we added an 8.20 to refer to the protocol deviation instead of what it was before, which was the incorrect number, 8.26. So the reason this is important is just that one, we want to make sure the references are correct. But two, the protocol deviation protocol provides instructions on what to do if you've deviated from protocol. These protocols have been put in place by Dr. McGraw. They're not guidelines. They carry the weight of law. If you're practicing EMS in Oakland County, you have to follow these protocols. If there's a deviation or you need to deviate, you should call for medical direction. However, if you don't, you fall under this protocol deviation protocol. We are telling all the agencies and all the providers, please report these to the MCAs. There's been several protocols adjusted because of the realization that they're not followable. Some of them, like fentanyl, the dosing was changed to 25, 50, 75, or 100 because that's how it's done in the field. And that was discovered by people turning in deviations. In the near future, we're going to be talking about some protocols at the protocol committee, ALS to BLS transfer of care. We're going to be talking about the child restraint system protocol and how to follow that. And if the protocol needs to be changed, all of these things are happening because they're being reported to the medical control. All of these things are being reviewed so that we can make the system better and make the protocols better so they make sense for providers. Sometimes when these protocol deviations are reported, there's a realization that there might be a lack of understanding by the providers. And at that point in time, we can put out system-wide education. So turn in those protocol deviations. That way we can track and figure out where they're happening and why they're happening so that we can fix the system and make it better. That's it for this protocol update. Thanks and take care. Just as a reminder, these protocols go in effect August 15th, 2024.